Hello viewers, good day to you. Welcome back to our Chevrolet Silvery Rado that had the absolutely destroyed front brakes when it came in. Literally it was destroyed. Pieces of it like were falling out of the caliper and the calipers were grabbing onto the rotors. The vehicle also had some very nasty exhaust system leaks. We had found on closer inspection that some of the bolts that uh, hold the manifold to the cylinder heads were, uh, were broken off. There were two on that side and I think just one over here on this side. Either way, in the last video, link in the description down below, we did the teardown segment, got the manifolds off and managed by some miracle uh, using the welder to extract the uh, broken off bolts. That one back there was the super duper hard one. See that guy right there? Yeah, we got it though. Got that one out. It was, it was a late night for sure, but the thing got extracted. I do not have any parts here. We have no gaskets yet for the manifolds, no bolts and no studs. But what I do have are some of the brake system components that are sitting outside of the floor. So in lieu of, uh, of the exhaust repair, we're gonna go ahead and switch back, get these brakes assembled and installed, and that way we'll be prepped for when the rest of the components show up. It may show up today, it might not, I don't know. But either way, I have uh, things to do to make progress on this particular Silverado. So let's go ahead and get our brake parts uh, unpackaged and installed. Opening Z hood. Yeah. This thing is just loaded with it. It's a circular cheetah. All right, guys, first things first, let's get these brake rotors hung up. I've got some, uh, some premium severe duty coated what are they called? Frontline rotors. These are front lines. Not sponsored, but that's what I'm using. I like to put them on the trucks. I use these on my truck and they're a very good rotor, very meaty. And when at all possible, this is what I'm gonna use. Now, they won't stay uh, painted forever. It's actually not really paint. It's a, a rust preventative coating. Put that on there. Yeah, as soon as we go to use these brakes, this coating's gonna wear away, which is what it's designed to do. So these are, uh, these are what we're gonna use and that's what I'm gonna put on. I've got a set of calipers and some hoses here, so let's get our calipers unboxed. I'll show you over here. Move that out of the way. There's our hoses. Here's our pads. Are these the right pads? Let me check them. Yeah, yeah, these are looking wrong. Not the right pads, okay. Gotta send these guys back, no worries. All right, that kind of changes uh, how this is gonna work. So I think next, all I can do is hang the calipers and then maybe transfer over the hoses. We'll try that and then uh, oh, we'll see how this works out. So far, we're, uh, we're like not doing okay. I'm missing parts for my exhaust and um, I don't have the right brake pads. The brake pad thing was my fault, but it's starting to add up to not how we want to start our day. I hate it when that happens. Okie doke, so what we're looking at right here is our fresh new caliper. Now, it appears that this is gonna be the passenger side caliper. Can you see the bleeder hose? If I were to hang this caliper on that rotor in the orientation that it's designed, the bleeder hose is at the bottom of the piston. So that tells me this right here is gonna be the right front caliper, which means the one in the box is gonna have to be the left front caliper. So we'll put this over here for now and we'll go back and fetch the other one. All right, here's how this is gonna work out. We're gonna go ahead and pull the bracket. Come here, bracket. We're gonna pull these apart and then get the bracket hung over the rotor. And then we're, we're just gonna have to move over to the other side and uh, do the same. I want to try to get these calipers disconnected from the vehicle before the parts guys get here with the other set of pads because these calipers have a core on them, which means the old ones have to get sent back. There we go. All right, 18 mil coming in. Let's get this guy tight. Clickage. And oh, I need a universal. In comes the wobbly bits. There we go. That helps it. Get around those dangly angles. Woo! Got it. All right, let's scooch it over some and we're gonna get this caliper removed and tossed back in the box. I've got a clamp here to clamp off the hose. It'll keep all the fluid from running out. I'm going to do a full system brake fluid exchange on this because that fluid, like we saw, was nasty. This fluid inside of these lines is all burnt up and, uh, and cooked, so we're gonna get rid of all the fluid that's in the truck. 
and flush it out with some nice new ultra dry BG fluid. Not sponsored. That's just what I use. Here, let's go ahead and bust this banjo bolt loose. There we go. Spillages! Get that back. Excellent. Right, let's unhook this guy and take this over to the oil drain and dump it out, drain it off. Okay, well, without pads, I'm trying to think of uh, the next best course of action. Let's go ahead and pull that other caliper off real fast, and then we can get that one boxed up for the core return, and uh, then we'll go ahead and change out the hoses. I think that would be the most efficient course of action during this inefficient operation here. There we go. I can't seem to find my other hose clamp, so I'm gonna have to use the uh, vice grip method here. Just clamp this guy on to squeeze it off. No reason to drain brake fluid all over the floor. There we go. You kind of don't want to do this with the uh, vice grips if you plan on reusing the hoses because it can actually damage and collapse the inside of that hose and then make the, uh, the brake system lock up. And that's, uh, that's not what we want to do. That's exactly how we got into this position uh, to begin with. Let's go ahead and get this banjo bolt disconnected. Unclickage. Come here. Got to save this. I don't think we get a new one with the lines. We do. We do get new uh, copper crush washers, but not a new bolt. Stick that in there for now. This guy goes back in the box. There. Now we can grab these old units, get this thing repackaged and sent back from a ten-dollar core credit. Come here. Pads are out. All the hardware's out. That's good to go. Oops. There. And you can have the shim too. All right. Man, I made it just in time. The guy just pulled up to uh, collect the return in the core. So that was, that was good thinking over here. Let's get this other rotor hung up here. Get that guy on. Get our set screw in there it's not exactly mandatory people leave them out but it makes this so much easier to put back together all right scooching left some let's get our caliper bracket hung here get that guy in bolt numero dos impact clicks coming in come here this thing's got some recoil Well, looky here, I went to pull the uh, caliper hardware and they did give us new banjo bolts. That's nice. While we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the brake pad shims on. I bet that the, uh, the pads are gonna have a set of shims that come with it, but we're gonna use the ones that come with the calipers. There we go, get that one in. Two shims set up. Waiting on parts. Alrighty, X amount of time has passed and I have received the proper brake pads for the application. So we're gonna go ahead and get these guys set up. Now you'll notice these are actually uh, two different types of pads. We've got an uh, inboard pad and we have an outboard pad. I believe the friction material is the same dimensions but the backing plate is slightly different. Uh, it shouldn't really affect any of the performance. Well, I mean, I, I know it won't affect performance because that's how it's built. So let's get, uh, let's get these pads in position here and then we can get those new calipers, whoa, gravity. We can get those new calipers set up, installed, and then get those lines changed out. And I'm still waiting on all my gaskets and my bolts and whatnot. Uh, for the uh, engine side of this repair, but we can at least finish up the brake job part Okay, we're nearly ready to get the caliper in. I'm gonna add some more lube to the slide pins I like my purple lube better than their clear lube So we're just gonna make it purple so we know that it's good It's gonna be our bottom pin I'll show you why I'm doing that in a second Okay coming in with the caliper got some lube on the top pin Check this out. We're just gonna slide that top pin into the bracket. Begin sliding, there we go. And then we can just hinge the thing down 
like so and get it bolted in. That way you don't have to take out both uh, slide pins and both bolts. You only got to do one. It doesn't work on every caliper, but it does work on this one. That one was loose. Loosey goosey, no bueno. Okay, let's go ahead and get this hose changed over real quickly like, and then uh, we can go over and finish up the other thing. Yeah, let me get this little bracket disconnected from the control arm. That bracket holds the hose. See that? All right, new hose right here. Old hose, let's go ahead and pull this out. We can route the replacement in where it belongs. And start getting this set up in position, just like so. Let's get our bolts in position here. There's our top one. And then one more bolt on the bracket down at yonder. That one goes right in there. A couple 10 mil clicks. Good. And then of course the wheel speed sensor wire has to go back in its bracket. So now this hose is ready to be installed on the caliper like so. But first, let's go ahead and get the unit installed on the uh, steel hard line brake line right up here. And I think it's not gonna reach. What is this? Here, we'll just pull it through some. There we go. Almost. Good. All right, let's get in here and crack this line loose. Now we are gonna start to spill brake fluid once this thing is off, so I gotta try to make this transition as quick as possible. Because this is basically just gonna start uh, spilling fluid as soon as that line comes loose. Let's get this clip out of here. This clip connects the, uh, the lower hose to the frame. We gotta reuse this. Just pulling that bad boy out, we can get this guy unbolted and then lose this, uh, this hose right here. Come on with it. There it goes, coming out, and we are dripping. Let's see, how does that go? It orients like so. That guy. The drips seem to have kind of slowed down. That's weird. I expected more fluid to be running out. Hmm. What are we doing? I we gotta orient this properly. There is a there's some tangs that line this hose up with the bracket. We gotta get those tangs in there in the proper positions. What are we doing? Needs a little bit more slack here so I can manipulate this. What's the deal? Is it just a really tight squeeze or do I have the wrong line? Hmm. Oh, there we go. No, it's just a real tight squeeze and I didn't have it uh, lined up properly. My bad. Here, let's put that in so it stays. Now the line can't come out of its, uh, out of its bracket. And we can get this guy threaded on and in position here. All right, a few turns on this fitting and that'll lock down the hard line. We can go get that banjo bolt on and get the caliper connected. Almost. And brake line clickage. There we go. I had to take the bracket off. 
to get some fitment action going. So let's get this thing back in position here. Wrap it around, get the bolt in. There. Re-click. Very good. All right, let's back it up and get our banjo bolt on. All right, new banjo with new copper crush washers. And we'll get this guy set up in its little hole right here and it screwed and bolted down. Well, maybe not screwed and bolted, we'll just bolt it down. We're gonna, we'll banjo bolt it. There we go, click. All right, one side mostly done. Let's uh, circumnavigate the Silverado one more time. We'll get that other side on next. Na -na 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 oh, I didn't put pads or a caliper on. I'm ahead of myself. There we go. All right, brake pads coming in. I forgot which way these went. Hang on, let's check the old one. Old one has witness marks for the two pistons on the caliper, so this is the uh, inboard side. Let's get that guy in. Next, outboard pad going in. Good. And it's caliper time. It's gonna be the same situation here with these slide pins. Lube it on up. And then we'll get the unit in position. There we go. And as for the bottom pin, we'll unscrew it, throw some lube on it, get that guy in the bracket, down, bolt. Here we go. And forward, click. Good. All right, that caliper is installed. Let's bust the hose out and get this guy changed out. Still waiting on, uh, what you call it, my exhaust parts. That makes me kind of sad because I wanted to do the exhaust work first and not do the brake work today. But we don't always get to make those decisions, I suppose. All right, let's crack this line loose. Line on clickage come off of there what are we doing i'm bending the bracket that's what i'm doing why hmm yeah that's fine frustrated pliers to the rescue i'll use the pliers to hold on to the bracket so the bracket can't bend Reverse clicks. There. Now it's starting to turn. Good. Okay. More. Uh oh. My light is out of battery. Battery assist. Get another one before I kill it. Okay, light repowering on. We've had a battery change. So I've got the hose here. I'm gonna do this one in kind of a reverse order. We'll throw our banjo bolt on first because this thing's kind of flopping around. It's annoying me. So we'll get this side on first. Get that guy bolted down and tight. Clickage. This is gonna run under our wheel speed sensor wire. Send that guy over there. We'll get you set up in your bracket right there. And you need to finish disconnecting. Oh, thank you. Disconnecting our line here. This one's kind of rough. It doesn't really wanna would come out. Perhaps it's just never been removed before. That could be it. Okay, that's off. Vice grips. And let's pull this old line out of here and get rid of it. 
decided to vice grip the uh, little clamp, clip clamp. It's easier than the needle noses, see? You get a good grip on it. Show. Come here. Let's pull this guy out. All the way out. Checking our little uh, alignment tabs, those look good. So, let's get these guys lined up and clipped back in. How did that go? I'm having the same trouble as I did on the other side, getting those little, little tabs in line. There we go. And I'll push that thing back in. Everything is a hammer. Okay, threads are started. And we'll tighten it down before we start leaking fluid everywhere. Good. like halfway down. Come on. All right, that's tight. Let's get our line hose in position. Again, there's gonna be one 10 mil bolt on this upper control arm here. And then the next one is on top of the knuckle, right here. And bolt comes down from the top. Take the juice. And I believe that is that. One eternity later. One weekend later, and I've had a parts delivery. Look at it here. Look at here. I've got some multi-layer steel exhaust manifold gaskets, some new studs in case we need them, some new bolts because we definitely need those for the manifolds, another set of bolts for the manifolds on the other side, some spark and plug wires, some spark plugs, and a couple other exhaust gaskets right here because I always change these guys when the manifolds come out. All right, now that we've got all the parts we need to finish assembly, let's start getting this stuff set up and in position. So we've got our uh, new multi-layer steel gasket here that's going to slip right in and get bolted on uh, with the exhaust manifold. So let's get the manifold to fit this up to it, get a couple bolts through there, and then we'll get it all wiggled into position and bolted back onto the head. At that point we can throw the spark plugs back in, rewire it, and then we can move on over to the driver's side and get that side reassembled. This will go very easily all the hard part is done we got through the hard part so it's all smooth sailing from here now earlier in the other video i caught a little bit of reaction about getting contaminants inside of the engine uh, especially on the other side when i was welding um the issue is is there's no issue really that uh the cylinder head uh, i think is the number seven cylinder on the driver's side that exhaust valve is closed so all i need is some air and any debris that went in there it'll just come right back out Plus the spark plugs are out, so I can blow right into the cylinder and uh, remove any contaminants. It's a non-issue, no worries. All right, manifold is on its way in. I've got the gasket set up on it, and I've got one stud in right here, and then another stud in, uh, you know, you can't see towards the back of it. So there's two studs hanging on to the gasket. And I just need to slip this thing into position here and get these two bolts started just a little bit. And uh, this thing will be good to go for a reassembly here. There we go. Stay. It's heavy. Hard to hold up with your thumbs. There's another method in case this doesn't work. Like if I can't keep it all aligned, we can just get one bolt in and then maneuver the other side once the, uh, the weight is taken up by the first bolt. Which is exactly how this is gonna have to go here. 
Hang on, let me screw that guy in some. There we go. Okay, all the weight's taken up now. I can relax slightly. Now, looking left a little bit, this is a good time to go ahead and uh, get this uh, donut gasket installed for the exhaust collector. I actually should have, um, probably should have put that in the manifold before I got started here. Let me pull this bolt back out and we can just pull the manifold up some to slip that, uh, that gasket in. Oopsie. Got a little too far ahead of myself. But I really wanted this manifold back on. I've been, uh, I've been anxious to get this thing done. It has been here far too long. And we'll pick that up. Donut gasket. It's gonna slip into a bore. There we go. Into the bottom of the unit. There, that was easy. Now I can get that, uh, that new fastener back in. They're blue, so you know that they're good. These are Felpro fasteners. They are for this exact application. Come on, line up now, Bolt. What just happened here? There we go. Screw that guy in. There. All right, two bolts in, four to go. All right, here, we'll thread these all with a 13 on a stick. There we go. So I was uh, I was reading comments on my, uh, on another Silverado video. It was actually my truck. I was doing the AC work on it. And somebody said, you know, they watch like almost every day and they find it unfortunate because the content now uh, does not seem to be as engaging or entertaining as my content from like eight months ago when I worked uh, at the retail store that I once was employed at and they were they were upset because they said they were becoming disinterested in the channel because of uh, because of the change and then I thought about it and I was like well you know I can kind of see that because uh, like I said, this is a, uh, I'm no longer working at a retail store. I'm working at my own store. And because of that, there's, there's less personalities around uh, and a different customer base. Uh, moreover, there's less drama because of that. And I think that might have been kind of like the hook for some, some viewers as they appreciated the drama, you know, the, the angry customer business or the, uh, you know, the nonsense that would happen between other technicians and myself, the radio wars, for example. And none of that stuff is here now because I, I now have my own store. And this is a low drama atmosphere that does not contain any of that, uh, well, that drama. So for those of you who are seeking the drama that used to be on the channel, I'm, I'm really sorry, but that stuff is gone now. Uh, quality of life has improved and I'm no longer engaging in that kind of behavior. There's enough nonsense in 2023. I don't want to perpetuate it. I'm trying to bring us back to reality here, not uh, not send us down that uh, that rabbit hole of nonsense. Alrighty, fasteners are in. Let's get these run down some and start to apply some torquage. Now, earlier you guys did see there was some warpage in this when I took out that uh, that front bolt uh, in a couple videos ago you saw this manifold kind of move a little bit and that was the tension uh, being released from the warpage. Um, it's not bad enough that it's going to warrant a replacement of the manifold so I can reuse it. I know some of you are wondering why I didn't replace it and replacing things like big pieces of cast iron can be rather expensive and I don't feel that that, uh, that cost is warranted at this time so uh, we're not going to end up replacing these manifolds. They are going to be reused. I hope that answers uh, that question. There we go. All right, let's get in here with some torque wrench action. Got the quarter inch gear wrench. We're gonna apply some actual clicks here. There's gonna be two passes on this. First one is 11 foot pounds, and then the next one I think is uh, 15. I'll double check it in a moment. There's our first actual click. Let's get that one there, because I can reach it. Oh man, forgive me if I sound a little fussy, 
I slept on my couch last night and I have this huge knot in my back at the rib cage. Doctor said I need a bacchiotomy. And it makes breathing kick somewhat laborious and uh, moderately painful. So I'm, I'm actually not having a great day. I'm having a, well, it's the antithesis of a great day. Cause I can't move and I can't breathe and I can't like it. Click. All right, I think that was the first pass. There we go. Uh, did I get this one? Oh, back pain is affecting the memory. Oh, I didn't get this one. There we go, that's the one I forgot. All right, there's our first pass at 11 foot pounds or 15 Newton meters. And second pass, that's 18 foot pounds or 25-ish Newton meters kickage. Next, we'll get that one. Oh, it hurts. It hurts to apply clicks. Painful clickage. There we go, that one. That one. Two more. There we go. Uno mas. In the back, all right. Exhaust is bolted on. Let's go ahead and get the dipstick tube in there. Then we'll get the spark plugs and the wires on. Then we can move over to the other side. Tube coming in. Let's just bring it up, down in the hole. And then it's got to go down into, let me show you guys down there, down into the engine block. See that right, right down there. See the hole? Yep. We'll slide it in. There's an O-ring for sealing. And I've gotten stuck up here. Hang on. Wrong. My poor crane brainium's not working. All right, we're slid into the uh, block skirt down there. We just need to bolt that on with 115 mil bolt to the head. Bolt coming in. Get that guy started. Impacting kicks. Good to go. Okie doke, spark plug time. We've got some Delto, Delto. Uh, we have some Delco OE replacement plugs. Let's get these guys threaded up and run down. And uh, then we can move on to those, uh, those spark plug wires. I'm gonna try to uh, expedite this process a little bit and move through it. I, I fear the uh, length of this particular video is gonna get somewhat uh, extended and I would not, uh, or I would like to avoid making this like a, a four part series. So it's already run longer than I anticipated it to run. But when you got like a seven hour job on the books, I guess, I guess doing it in like two or three hours worth of videos. I guess that's a, a, I don't know, a good rate. I don't know, can't think, back hurts. My crane brainium's not functioning. We're getting the back plug in. It's it's an evil plug that doesn't uh, give much space to tinker with here. It still isn't in. I'm gonna use the socket to uh, kind of get this in order. Don't fall, spark plug, don't fall. Oh, I'm about to drop it, oh no. Dropping spark plugs is uh, instant death. It'll break them, it'll break the ceramic, and then they will leak spark, which is not okay. Is that you're, you want to contain that spark? You want to contain it and move it into the combustion chamber, not uh, not a, not let it go wherever you want, all willy nilly like. There. Hey, let's get these threads run down, and then I'll apply torque to these as well. Actual click. Not that. That was just a free click. Just running down the threads. Next, and that back one. I don't even know if I can get a tool on that one. No worries. I'll do it the, the manual way with my fangies. Just screw it on in there. Come on. There we go. Okay, so according to the all data, spark plug torque is also 11 foot pounds. That's uh, 15 Newton meters again. There we go. We've got an adapter for the quarter inch uh, torque wrench. That one's good right there. Next, I need an extension. 
I had some clearance issues with that AC hose up at the top. My wrench was hitting it. And uh, last one. How am I gonna get all of that one? Heater hoses are in the way. Hang on here. I'll just move those over some. There we go. Perfect. Torque achieved. All right, next up, plug wires are coming in. I've got the uh, heat shields already installed and a little bit of dielectric grease uh, down inside of the boot. Let's click these guys on and connect them to their individual coils. Very quick process. Plug these guys all in. Make sure you feel the snap and hear the audible clickages. That's how you know that the connector seated on the plug and on the coil. If you don't, the thing can come off and then uh, you'll get a misfire later, resulting in a customer comeback, which is not okay. You try to avoid those. I mean, it's inevitable, things happen, but if you can avoid it, then avoid it. Okay, so we're good on this side over here. Let us circumnavigate the Silverado and move over to the driver's side. All right, one is done, on to numero dos. This one's not as much fun because there's a bunch of stuff in the way, but we'll get through it, no worries. A little bit of blow gun action. That way, any potential concern for slag is eliminated. All the way in the cylinder. Manifold. Same thing on the others. That valve's open. Valves open. Alright, good to go. Alright, so we're looking down at the top of the Y pipe over here on the driver's side. I need to pry out this little seal uh, for the flange and then get this new seal in position right here. Now, the new one is a little bit smaller because it hasn't been compressed or fitted into that groove yet. So we gotta make sure we push that thing in before getting that manifold in position. Otherwise, this little gasket here will be out of its little groove and the thing will leak. And uh, well, that would be bad. We don't wanna do that because then I gotta take it apart again. That feels pretty good. It looks pretty good from what I can see. Yeah, that'll be all right. Okay, let's go ahead, back out some and get that manifold in. Moving on back. Okay, we're gonna get our gasket in there first. We're labeled down, so that part uh, points down, and this is the manifold side. So you have a manifold side, and we have a cylinder head side. And as it's labeled, this is our manifold side. So we're just gonna stick that thing right up there on the ignition coils. We'll grab that thing later. Because what I'm gonna do is get the manifold in position, and then slip that uh, gasket down. Stay up there. We slip that gasket down in between it and then start to bolt it in. Oh, the pain of reaching and holding heavy things extended with what feels like a broken rib. Oh, woe is me. Yeah, here's a drama day. You guys want some drama, here it is. Mechanic works with broken rib. There's your drama, fellas. I quit. Oh, that hurts. Oh, I cannot take weight with the arm. Okay, hey. All right, the manifold's kind of in there. Now I just need to get the, the bolts set up and get the gasket set up. So let's see, reaching in, getting past the steering shaft. I need to get this uh, kind of lined up and supported. Man. I, if I put any weight on my right arm, it just like takes the breath right out of me. I swear I got a broken rib. How do you break a rib while sleeping? Stupid couch. There. All right, there's one bolt. Let's get this guy started. Ah, uh, no oxygen. <laughs> Couple threads, here we go, it's turning in. Okay, that's good. More bolts coming in to play. Let's get... Well, let's get the gasket realigned first. There we go. Stay there, gasket. Okay, second one. That one's going in. No problem. 
slide that forward some so it lines up a little better. Third bolt right here. This is why you can't tighten down bolts until all of them are in because this thing still has to be moved around and wiggled a little bit for everything to line up. There's three. Number four is going in all the way up front. Straighten out our manifold so the threads can realign. Get on in there, Bolt. Come on. What do you... Oh, there it goes. It was getting stopped at the gasket. Okay, that one's in. I think I got just two more. Yep. There's the one in the back. Let's see if we can't see here. Get that out of the way. There's the one in the back, and then there's the one in the way, way back. Remember the one we had to weld a nut onto to remove. That one should be fun because I can't even see it. It's back there. But I can probably feel it. Yeah, I can feel the hole. Drop the nut, bolt, caught the bolt. Try, oh, dropped it again, trying again. Reaching in there. I've got to thread this with like my fingertips and I'll probably have to tighten it with like a ratcheting wrench, me thinks. contorting. Okay, the threads are starting to catch. And that back one is now threaded. Whew, good to go. Okay. Let's go ahead and run these guys in some. There we go. Clicks. Gravity. Socket gravity recovered. Bending down was painful. Ah, oh, the agony. Uh, I'm just, it's not that bad. I'm just a big baby, I guess. I'll be all right. I'll sleep on the couch again tonight just to be spiteful of the pain. There's that one. Can't get a good line of sight on that other one. I need a longer extension one. Here, we'll just sock it right past all this. Clickage. And that back one I'm gonna get from the underside in a moment. First, let's get the uh, exhaust pipe set up. Oh wait, no, no, first, next, last. I need to actually torque these things. What am I doing? Gotta get them tight. There's a click. We're at the uh, 11 foot-pounds. This is a dual-pass torque spec. There we go. Next. That one's good. And I'll leave the one in the back for all the way last. Because like I said, I gotta get that from the bottom. There. All right, you guys weren't looking, but I reached down in there and I got that back bolt on. Let's, uh, while we're still up here, let me get this uh, battery junction block bracket bolted back to the alternator bracket. You guys can't see because I'm a terrible cameraman. But I try. Two of those bolts going into that bracket right there. Got those. Let me switch gears in my head and plug in this coolant temp sensor because it's staring right at me. Switching gears again. Back to uh, some click action. Oh man, I really am losing it. I forgot to do second pass torque on uh, on the exhaust bolts. Man, not okay. Good thing I took some Joe Rogan's Alpha Brain this morning, or I'd be in real bad shape. Second pass click action. And I'm not gonna be able to torque wrench that back one again because I can't. Uh, well, I can't reach it. At least not with a torque wrench. I, I got it with a regular wrench, but no torque wrench, so I had to just kind of oh, click, go by feel on that one. Did I miss any of these yet? There's that one there. Little moss. I already got that one. Okay. Just so I can not forget, check that one again. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, let's uh, let's toss these spark plugs in next. Again, I'm ow pain. I'm gonna try to move real, real quickly through this. 
I know I said I was about to bolt those Y pipes back on, but I got distracted by myself. It happens. I mean, if, if I'm not distracting myself, then who's gonna distract me? Troy's at lunch, so he's not here to distract me. Wife unit's really busy in the office, so she can't distract me, and the, the kids are watching like Wobbly Life, so they can't distract me either. I'm all by myself. Don't wanna be all by myself. Don't quit your day job, Ray. This three spark plugs installed. I'm losing my mind today. Oh my god. I need a nap. There we go. That's the fourth one. Let's get these guys torqued up. And uh eventually I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do and put that Y pipe on. And I haven't forgotten the steering shaft either. That would be not okay to forget that. Because then the car can't steer. You go to test drive it and never make it out of the building. That would be bad. Here, I'm gonna cheat with these spark plugs. I'm gonna run them down with my little quarter inch driver. It's on trigger control mode, no worries. I shall not damage the spark plugs. Turn, there we go. Socket gravity again. Oh! Bending down hurts. Yeah, there's your drama, like I said earlier. This whole video is me complaining about my couch. Is that what you wanted? Is that what you wanted? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Are you entertained? <laughs> My wife's gonna come outside looking at me like, are you okay, man? You seem to be uh, a little bit extra unstable. Are you not entertained? Oh, I thought, I, I thought it was something completely different. Yeah, it is. Are you not entertained? I, I thought it was something else. <laughs> She's speechless. What is it? What did you think? Oh, so I thought are they I here? Them. No, not yet. Okay. Are they not entertained? I don't know. They might be. I think they're entertained. All right. And now that all the tomfoolery has expired, let's get some actual torque on uh, on these plugs here. See, I told you I didn't get it too tight with that little gun. It's not even tight at all. It's loosey goosey. I'm over here banging my uh, precision instrument. Bangy on things, click. Oh, the pain just returned. It's like shooting pain, it comes and goes. It was gone earlier, but it is back now. Oh, the humanity. <clears throat> Twice clicks. Numeral trace. Oh, that one's a little tighter, good. There we go. Last one, do I have space to fit my tool? No. Yes, no, maybe so. Try again. Extension. There we go. All of the extension. Extendo clicks. There we go. Beautiful. All right, spark and plug wires, freshly lubed. Let's get these guys snapped on, back on their coils. We're almost there. Which is cool, because I'm going home when I'm done with this truck. We're having a half day kind of day, because I just, I, I just can't. I just can't, not today, I wanna go back to my couch. The very couch that has caused me so much agony is beckoning for my presence. Get that on there. There we go. Heat shield installed, I almost forgot. Oh, plug that guy in and then back up top on the coil clickage. Okay, good. Now we can put that Y pipe on. Make sure my gasket's still aligned and it is good. 
and I've got new nuts to uh, make the install because I welded the old nuts to the cylinder head. Okay, we're back down below the driver's side. Here's our Y pipe and converter. There's the studs. There's our manifold. Let's get uh, get that thing lined up. Come on. I don't have muscle force to do this. I've only got half of a torso that functions, so no. All right, nut going on. It's blue, so you know it's good. Next one, right there. And third one coming in. And before I tighten this down, I'm gonna reach up and check that O-ring, or that gasket rather. That feels good, it's in its groove. And I'm looking right to check the other side. That's also lined up. Let's get this guy tight. The nut fell off. It vibrated loose. Maybe I should get a bigger gun besides the uh, quarter inch drive. I don't think that one's going to do it. Okay, trying again with the proper tools here. Let's uh, let's stop screwing around. Maximum electron clickages. Yeah, I'm tired of screwing around. I want to get this done. Socket. Oh, come here, socket. Don't let me reach. It hurts. Pain drama. It's pain tube. There we go. All right, that's all three of those. Let's move on over to the right-hand side real quick and get, uh, get those last three bolted in. All right, I've got two of them on. The flange is already over the studs. Number three, let's get that one threaded on. I know you guys can't see, it's dark in here. Ah, there goes my nut. Let's try again. Oh, I've dropped it again. Come on. I thought I was going to speed through this section and make this not a long or a long super long video Yeah, if I can keep it on an hour, we'll be good The uh, the interwebs don't really care for videos longer than an hour All right now that I know what I'm doing we're gonna get through this That one's on good Let's get that one in the top. I can't reach that one. Need a longer extension. Okay, I got a socket on it. Loud noise is coming in. Clickages. And then that third one, we got to get that one from the outside. Remember the uh, O2 sensor's in the way. Quick ratchet wrench, gravity action, we're good to go. And that's the last of the exhaust nuts, which is good. Tired of messing with them. You can only fiddle with nuts for so long before it becomes boring. You gotta find something else to do. I need to get over and get that steering shaft on next, actually. That's what I'm uh, kind of avoiding. Not really avoiding it, I just keep forgetting to do it. I get distracted by other stuff. Like babbling on nonsense and back pain. There we go. Mm, one more fits. Got it. All righty, folks. We are nearing a point of conclusion. I've got the uh, wheel well liners back in. What I'm going to do before we do the brake fluid exchange is uh, we're going to go ahead and let this thing down some. Make sure everything under the hood, camera gravity, we make sure everything under the hood's looking good. And then I need to go ahead and restarting the engine because I want to double check and make sure we do not have any exhaust system leaks. I have, uh, I've already put the, um, the steering shaft back on. I did that while you guys weren't looking. Oh, that's how you break a $400 light. It's not okay. Still work? Yes, it does. Okay. Woo! Close call on that one. Anyway, let's reach on in here, grab a hold of that key, fire this thing up. Beginning engine starting sequence now. that no exhaust leaks this is good engine's looking good 
No misfires, no shaking action. Let's take a look over here on this side. See, we need to button up that wiring harness a little bit. Spark plugs are sparking. Wheel wells installed. Everything's looking really good so far. It sounds good. All right, folks, I think this thing is good to go. Uh, there are a couple other items that need to be addressed on this. Uh, number one being the brake fluid. I've got to do a full system fluid exchange on it. We've already done a clean and adjust on the rear drums. And I do need to check into that check engine light right there. Uh, I speculate that that could have been just like some P420 codes or maybe even fuel system rich or lean uh, due to those exhaust leaks. But uh, I'm going to have to address that one at a later time because this video has gone on long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and end this thing right now. I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. As always, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video or this series of videos rather. Uh, if you did enjoy this particular video and or any of the other videos, please feel free to communicate that to me effectively by tapping the like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Chevrolet. End of exhaust job. End of massive brake job restoration. End of video. End of transmission. See you guys later. Bye. Have a great day. Hi. No, it's bye. We're leaving. Bye. Bye. Oh, we're, we're, it's yeah. at the end now? Yeah, we're leaving. Oh, I just got here. Yeah, well, you're oh. late. Oh, All right, bye. All right, bye. Bye. Should I stop recording? <laughs> yeah. Does it make you nervous? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to post I'm this. <laughs>